Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. Today I will be using Army Painter Speed Paints to paint Octrin Glimscry from Warhammer Quest Cursed City. I have to say, this is a cool looking miniature. I actually think it has a bit of a Bloodborne style to it. But it was one of the miniatures that went together rather poorly compared to many others in the set. It had some really very obvious join lines and it took quite a bit of green stuff and sanding to get that sorted out. As a result, it does mean the miniature is completely assembled now, and it's a little bit of a pain to paint this way. Really, it would be nice to paint it in sections, particularly because of the way that the staff overlaps across the chest. But there is a way around this. Thankfully, that really long flowing beard and the staff have quite a lot of flexibility in them, and you can actually bend them backwards and forwards, moving them around to create more of an area that you can access with a paintbrush at the front of the miniature. Obviously you have to be careful, but as long as you take care when you're doing it, you shouldn't have any problems. And what I've done here is I've spray undercoated the whole miniature with Army Painter Matte White. And then when that's completely dry, I moved the staff and beard to one side and just applied some Army Painter Gravelord Grey just to the chest area so that there was no white showing so that no matter what happened with the rest of the paint job, if I did miss any areas in that chest cavity, at least there would be some dark coloration there to look like shadow rather than just having the white primer. But with that done, we are ready to start the painting. And we're going to start with the small areas of the lightest colours. So the first colour we're going to use is the Crusader skin. There is very little visible skin on this miniature, it's just the hands. So I'm going to very carefully apply a thin coat to those hands. And I don't want a lot of the paint going on here, I don't want him to have a very dark skin tone. So I'm going to pull the paint quite thin over the miniature, just making sure there's enough for the recess shading. Then I'm switching to Pallid Bone, and Pallid Bone is going to be used on the pages of all of his books. So I'm very carefully applying it to any pages we can see. There's some pages on the books, there's also a scroll on his back, which is a parchment scroll, and then there are some sheets of paper that are sticking out of the side of the book under his right arm. So all of that will get Pallid Bone. I'm also going to use Pallid Bone on his face mask, but I'm not applying that at this stage. I'm going to do that a little bit later on. For now, it's just all of these parchments and book pages. Trying to make them look a little bit older and more weathered than if we had used white instead. I'm then switching to hardened leather and we're going to apply this to most of the other brown areas on the miniature. So all of the covers of the books will get hardened leather. Any scroll cases and things like that will also get hardened leather. I did consider using hardened leather on the staff as well, but instead I've decided to go for a darker color for that, just for more variation in the color tones. You will notice as well on the books, there are some straps. I will do the straps in a darker brown as well. But again, I'm just working carefully around the miniature, anywhere where I can see any of the books showing, any scroll cases, anything like that. I'm applying the paint and I'm doing it as carefully as possible, trying to avoid overspill. However, once I have done the books and the staff, I will go back around the miniature with Army Paint and Matte White, and I will just clean up any areas where I have overpainted before I paint the cloak. Next up is dark wood. As I said, this is going to go on the leather straps on the books. Just being careful not to overpaint onto the brown and the pallid bone we've already done. But I'm also going to use this dark brown for the staff. And at this stage, most of the details are done on this miniature. It's mainly just long flowing cloaks. So that's what we're going to move on to next. And I'm going to use Hive Dweller Purple for the cowl at the top part of his cloak. And I've said this before with Hive Dweller Purple, I'm never happy with the results I get. I keep trying with it, I keep experimenting with it. I shook this bottle for an incredibly long time to make sure the pigment was as mixed as possible. I made sure my brush was nice and wet. I applied small amounts of the paint and applied it as smoothly and evenly as I could. And even then, I'm still just not happy with the result. I just don't think I'm going to be using this purple anymore. Unless I absolutely have to, or it's just for a very small area. It just doesn't work for me. But for the lower part of his clothing, I'm going to use Magic Blue, and this is a lovely color. It goes on really well. It's nice and smooth and even. You don't get any patches at all. It does really good recess shading, and it's a lovely shade. Unfortunately, I just don't think it's the right shade for this miniature. It's far too light and bright. Glimscry should be in much darker clothing. But it is very good for the little gem in his staff. Moving on, I'm going to use Pallid Bone for the face mask. You could perhaps do a metal face plate instead, or you could go with something very white, which is like the official painting guide. I thought it would look suitably creepy to have it in Pallid Bone. 
Glimscry is a very creepy guy. And then I'm switching to Gravelord Grey, and this is for his foot, just the one bit of the foot you can see there at the bottom, but I'm also going to use this on his long flowing beard. And my idea here is at the top of the beard, I'm going to apply quite a lot of the paint. And then as we move down the beard, I'm going to thin it out. I'm going to apply more water, stretch it more thinly, so that by the end of the beard, we basically have a white color. Just to give us a nice transition through that long flowing beard. And this is something you can do quite easily with the Army Painter Speed Paint. You can keep stretching that paint out. You can keep applying more water, stretching it thinner and thinner even to the point where you've wiped it back off the miniature completely. And it is possible to get a nice blended transition. And at this point we have finished with the Army Painter Speed Paints and I'm not that happy with this miniature. I do quite like the beard, the staff turned out okay, the books are okay, but I really dislike that purple cowl and as much as I like the magic blue, I think it is an absolutely lovely color that I'm going to use a lot. It just doesn't work for this miniature. So what I'm going to do at this stage is apply the paints to the base of the miniature. I'm going to hit it with a quick spray of Army Painter Matte Varnish. And the reason I'm varnishing it is because I'm going to go back with a few other Citadel paints and do some extra work. And I want to minimize the risk of any kind of reactivation. And first of all, I'm going to use Drakenhof Nightshade, and I'm just going to apply a coat of this all over that cowl. And my hope here is that we're going to get some better recess shading on that cowl, and we're also going to even out the coloration because it was very blotchy, that purple didn't go on very smoothly at all. So we're just trying to tie that all together, trying to make a more even coat to work from, because we will apply some layered highlights to that afterwards. And while that's drying, we're going to switch to Seraphim Sepia. And what I'm going to do here is apply it to the bottom of his clothing to make it look like he's covered in dirt and he's been dragging himself through the mud. And that's really just to knock down that pale blue color, which as nice as it is, doesn't really work for this miniature who I think should be dirty and grimy and unpleasant. So we're going all the way around the base, adding in that Seraphim Sepia. And then we're going back to the cowl again and we're going to thin down some alien purple and we're going to apply a few layers of this. This is going to bring out the raised details, it's going to emphasize the recess shading that the Drakenhof Nightshade has done. And really we're just going to get a much smoother, cleaner purple finish. And I have to stress I'm not really going to tang with the layering here, I'm just applying a few layers just to tie it all together. I'm still doing this incredibly quickly. And then finally, Agrax Earthshade. We're going to do the same thing we did with the Seraphim Sepia, working around the base of the miniature, just applying more splotches of dirty clothing. And once we have finished with that, we will have a miniature which I'm happier with. I'm still not incredibly happy with it, but I think it's good enough now. So we're leaving it at that. So here we have the final thing. Obviously, I still need to do some detailing on the base. I need to put some static grass and stuff on there, but the actual painting of the miniature is complete. And I'm much happier with the cowl. I'm much happier with that blue now that it has been dirtied up. I do think it was worth going back, just doing that little bit of extra work, because in this case, for this particular miniature and with this particular color combination, the Army Painter's speed paints just didn't work for me on this one. But I hope you have found this process interesting because that is it from me for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, please consider pressing the like button. If you really enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I'll see you all again very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.